Hello, citizens of the internet. Prepare to disagree. So today I'm going to be talking about the decimal system and why it's better than the system that we use. This would be considered an unpopular opinion because most people don't even know that we operate in a certain base and that that base may not be the most efficient one that we use. And a short disclaimer, if you are not a fan of mathematics, you are not going to like this video, so go ahead and, like, I don't know, watch Netflix or something. Daredevil's out. It's really good. Let's begin. So what do I mean by going in a different base? Well, the base I'm going to be talking about is a base 12 system. And the way it's different from our system is uh, this little number right here is how many numbers that you get to work with. So in a base 10 system, we have 10 numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 different numbers. And when you get to 9, you just do 1 and 0. You start from there, and you do that whole number system again. Well, in a base 12 system, you add two more numbers to that, which I will be calling, oop, which I will be calling deck and L. As you can imagine, this changes how we multiply and how, every, how these numbers relate with each other. So, uh, for instance, 5 times 5 is no longer 25 in the base 12 system. 5 times 5 is 21. Or, actually it would be pronounced 2 do 1. So how is this better than the system that we're using? Up here, I'm going to be using the base 10 system, and down here I'm going to be using the base 12. And I'm going to show you why base 12 is actually better than base 10. You'll notice that with the base 10 system, these numbers don't really follow a very good pattern. Like if you look at the ones place for threes, you have three, six, nine, two, five, eight, one. It has to go through all the numbers before it finally comes back to zero and then of three and it repeats the pattern. Same thing with four and with six and with eight and with nine. But in the base 12 system, the multiples go three, six, nine, do which is the dozen way of saying what looks like 10. And there's 13, 16, 19, 2 do, and so on. 4 is even easier. 4, 8, do. Do 4, do 8, 2 do. 2 do 4, 2 do 8, 3 do, and so on. 6 just goes, 6 works like 5 does in the base 10 system. It just goes 6, do, do 6, 2 do, 2 do 6, 3 do. So you're already starting to see a pattern, but it gets kind of cooler. 8 plus 8 is do 4, and then do 4 plus 8 is 2 do. So it kind of follows 4's pattern, but in reverse. You see 4, 8, 0, 4, 8, 0. Well, 8 is going to go 8, 4, 0, 2 do 8, 3 do 4, 4 do. So 8, 4, 0, 8, 4, 0, and 9 does the same thing except with 3. So you have 9 becomes do 6, 2 do 3, 3 do. 3 do 9, 4 do 6, 5 do 3, 6 do, and so on. And if you're not familiar with this, it, it probably seems very confusing, but think about it like this. Every do is the same thing as 12. So each do will have all the same multiples that 12 would in the base 10 system. And you may actually be more familiar with changing bases than you thought. Take for example, something I'm sure you've heard of, the binary system. This is a base two, meaning you only work with two numbers, one and zero. So the number, the counting goes zero, one, and since there's only two numbers, you can treat this kind of like you would treat nine. You've got nowhere else to go, so now you've got to do one zero. And then one one. So this is kind of like 99, and you'd have to do this, one zero zero. One zero one, one one zero, and so on. Um, you've heard of binary with computers and things of the sort. This is all it's talking about, is this is zero, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. It's just you're only using two numbers to express those values. Another strength of the base 12 system is decimals, or I guess in this case you'd call them dozenals. So if you have one third, and maybe one sixth, and we'll also do one fourth, 
One third in a base 10 system, the one that we use, is just 0.33333 forever. One sixth is 0 0.1666666 forever. And then 0.4 is 0 0.25. That one doesn't seem as bad. But when you think about it, these are very, very common fractions. And the fact that expressing them as decimals is so unwieldy is a bit annoying. So in the base 12 system, one third is only 0 0.4. And I used a semicolon there uh, just to make sure that you know that I'm not using the decimal system, just to, just to have something, a different way of expressing it. One fourth is 0 0.3. And um, some other differences, one half is 0 0.6, and things like that. It's another good strength for it. Finally, the decimal system, the biggest reason for it is that it doesn't actually change any of the major mathematics, the stuff that professor, professors, professors do on a daily basis and just experienced professional mathematicians, it wouldn't change much for them. It would just change the smaller stuff. But that's the thing that's so important. It changes smaller day-to-day -day mathematics, making it a lot easier and a lot easier to remember. So it'd be good for education. People would learn math a lot faster and younger. Um, and it just makes everything a lot more easy to follow. But you might be saying, how about all the numbers we already have in place? All these things that we have in base 10. How easy is it to convert to base 12? It's actually relatively easy. It's a bit of a long process, but each individual step is easy. So for the only example I'm going to do to keep this going pretty quickly and finishing quickly, I'm going to use the year that this is being filmed and uploaded. 2015, if the camera will stay in focus. Okay. So the way you convert from base 10 to base 12 is you separate it into its parts. Each part that only has one significant figure. So 2,000 plus 10 plus 5. Well, 5 is easy. 5 in the decimal system is just 5. 10, if you remember, I added a couple of numbers after 9. The one right after 9, which would equal to 10, is dec. Looks like an upside down 2. And then 2,000 is where it gets interesting. So whenever you convert, you have to know what this is in this system. In this system, 10 is equal to dec. And you can write this out as being 2 times 10 to the third. And all you have to do is go 2 times dec to the third. You put this first number times the number you're converting number you're using, in this case dec, and you give it the degree that's equal to the number of zeros in that number. So 2 times dec to the third. So that becomes 2 times 6 grow l do 4. And the thing behind the names is this place is the same, this is expressed as do, which is short for dozen, and this number is gro, which is spelled G-R-O-S with a silent S, and it's short for gross, and a gross is a dozen dozens. Um, so you do 2 times 6 gro eldo 4 plus dec plus 5. 2 times 6 l 4 is... that's 8. 2 times l is do dec. 2 times 6 is do plus 1 is do 1. And then, so now you end up with this plus those other two numbers up here. This plus dec plus 5. 8 plus dec is do 6 plus 5 is do l. Carry the 1, l, and then bring these two down. And that is the year that we're in if you convert it to the decimal system. Something interesting about it is that next year, if you add one here, be the turn of a dozenal century, which I guess since that would be a grow, it would guess be a grocery? Question mark? <laughs> if you want to convert back, you do something similar. So we've got what 
the Dozenal Society. Uh, this is a standard, this isn't something I've made up, so it's gonna sound crazy, and I know it sounds crazy, but you've got one Mo, one Grow, L Do L. We're gonna take that from a base 12 to a base 10. And so what we gotta do is, we take each of these, and to move it over, we do what we did earlier, except instead of using deck, we're gonna use 12, because Do in the Dozenal, oops, because Do in the Dozenal system is equal to 12 in our system. So, this could then be said as two times, or one times, 12 to the third, 1 times 12 squared, 11 times 12, and then 11. So I've just brought that down so that I can have a bit more space to work with. So you've got 1 times 12 cubed, which is 1,728. Got 1 times 12 squared, which is 144. You've got 11 times 12, which is 132, and you have one more 11. So you get that plus that is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. You got 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 3 is 10, plus 1 is 11. You've got 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 1 is 0. You've got 2015. And that's how you convert between the bases. So I've told you all of this. What makes the Dozenal system so amazing? <laughs> so, base 10 system, 10 only has two factors that aren't 1 and 10, and that's 2 and 5. And 5 isn't really a number that we have to use often naturally. Like, the only time 5 comes in is with man-made numbers. So, over here, 12, though, has 1 and 12, and it has 3 and 4, and 2 and 6. So that's a whole other set of factors, which is why 3 will be so quick to go to Do if you're counting in the decimal system, and 4 will go to Do, and 2 and 6 will go to Do really easily, um, which just opens up for a lot easier math. It doesn't require so much head work. It just, just happens if we were to get used to it. But you're asking, we chose 10 because we have 10 fingers. So how am I supposed to count in the decimal system with my fingers? Like, how are kids supposed to learn math if they don't have six fingers on each hand. There's actually a way to count to Do on just one hand. If you use your thumb as your pointer, you start on the midsection of your pointer finger. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, deck, L, Do. So that's the decimal system and why we should be using it more than the decimal system. But that's just my unpopular opinion. Stay schmexy and trust no one.